Hey everybody, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Stash Report from the Stash Project. Today is St. Patrick's Day 2017. It's been a while since a ethnic drinking holiday has fallen on a Friday, so uh, hopefully you all make it through the weekend without uh, too much of a hangover. Uh, knowing that our audience is male-centric, uh, please restrain yourselves from doing any attempts of kissing your screen. I will fix this for you and be, listen to me, I'm Irish. Hmm. There we go. So we have a few uh, more kit announcements from Hasegawa and uh, a few more kit releases from Japan. Pretty much uh, your uh, normal third week of the month. So let's uh, bounce on into it here so we can get ourselves to sleep because it's uh, work night. Um, April, Hasegawa. Reissue of their 1999 Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 6. This will uh, represent the World Rally Championship winning car uh, from the 1999 season. That would be uh, Tommy Mackinnon. So a reissue of that kit. And then for May, they're going to once again reissue. This will be the second time now this, is, this kit has been reissued in the last uh, 18 months. Their uh, 1977 Lancia Stratus HF from the 1977 Monte Carlo Rally. And this is the uh, Alitalia livery. And they're also going to be reissuing their Nissan Fairlady 240ZG, which is the 240Z that we would all know as being adopted here in the United States. Um, the ZG is sort of the uh, luxury model, if you will, and has the composite uh, headlight covers that we, of course, did not get in the United States because our government could not understand what a composite headlight cover was until, what, the 1980s. And uh, that's a curbside kit. It's probably the best proportioned uh, 240Z kit that there is, uh, but, you know, the Fujimi kit has an engine in it. Granted, the engine doesn't come with much of an interior or an engine bay. Like, it doesn't have shock towers or anything like that, but it's sort of a toss-up. All of the, you know, the 240Z is probably, the Hasegawa 240Z is probably the best kit if you just want to build a kit of the car and you don't care about the engine or anything else like that. The Fujimi one may be a better place to start if you want to do a full detail build, so... Sort of is what it is on that. So uh, we got a couple of sort of teaser things out of uh, Playmos, and they are uh, these photos that they put up the other day, which show the first 3D renders of the front fascia uh, for the uh, Dodge Challenger Hellcat. So a couple of uh, angles on that, sort of made it up with the new hood that we showed you last week. And then there's also this photo, which they released uh, today, which shows them uh, doing a little test fitting with the photo etch for the McLaren 570S. So hopefully uh, progress is coming with the photo etch, because I'd like to get the AMG GT photo etch, along with uh, getting those wheel sets for the McLaren 570S, uh, the 540 uh, and the SLS, or not the SLS, but the AMG GT as well. Um, these test shots just released today. These are from BMAX, and this is the first round test shot for the uh, Brabham BT44 F1 car. So that looks like that may be the next uh, new kit that will be coming down the line. And by order of announcement, I believe this is the next kit uh, that would be you know, due to be worked on. The uh, 11, the AE92 Group A car that uh, is going to be coming out later this month, Really, it was announced after the Brabham, or pretty much the same time. Uh, but that car, obviously, the production on, went ahead with that one uh, on a much ex more expedited rate than the F1 car. But the F1 car, for the people who are interested in, obviously still is coming. So that took us to the kit releases for the month, or for this week, I should say, for the month. The month is only halfway over. Um, first up, I want to mention this because I have forgotten it the last three episodes, and this kit actually came out at the end of February, it is a reissue of the Aoshima Nissan Fairlady Z. We would recognize it here in the United States, of course, as the 350Z. Uh, this kit comes with two hoods, and those two hoods allow you to build it either as a 2005 or 2007. It also comes with the left-hand drive interior pieces and wipers um, from the um, export-only version that they did for the North American market. So you can build this as a uh, North American spec 350Z. It includes the decals and logos for the 350Z, as well as the uh, JDM Fairlady Z decals as well. 
Now, moving on to this month's stuff from uh, Aoshima, the uh, Celicas, there was a, two Celicas are supposed to be reissued this month as part of the model car line. Those have been pushed back to April. Uh, more than likely, I'm going to guess because of photo etch uh, difficulty. Seems like everybody can't get their photo etch done right now. That's getting it done uh, for, through the normal sources. And, uh, you know, it's just being delayed. I don't know if it's a lot of photo etched. It was all dumped in right after Chinese New Year or what, but uh, that would be my guess because the, the box art exists for both kits. But on the uh, Aoshima corporate release list, they have been pushed back to April. So anybody who's had those on order or thinking about ordering them, you know, it'll be a couple weeks still. But uh, the other kits in the tune, both the tune model car and the model car uh, have been released for this week, uh, this month, this week. Puh, easy for me to say. Uh, the two cars that that vaguely fit into, because these are sort of barely fitting into the category as far as I'm concerned, for the model car are the 2004 Nissan GTR Z-Tune. Uh, this, of course, being Aoshima's, uh, you know, uh, I want to say attempt, but that makes it sound like it failed. This is Aoshima's, uh, you know, version of the Z-Tune. Uh, obviously, Tamiya also has one. Uh, this kit is curbside, as is the Tamiya one. You get three sets of wheels with this kit, so, I mean, it's if nothing else, you get a couple free sets of wheels if you don't happen to have one of these already. Uh, the R34 from uh, Aoshima do have the situation where the chassis has a lot of the parts engraved that the uh, Tamiya one does not, but the Tamiya one also doesn't have a lot of the correct suspension parts. Uh, this the Z Tune has a lot of the the, the suspension stuff covered up by uh, belly pans, so you don't notice it, uh, which is probably the reason why Tommy didn't bother to actually you know tool the correct suspension parts between the just the regular V Spec two kits that they made and the Z Tune. Uh, but of course, Aoshima didn't do that either because everything is more or less tooled, more or less uh, molded into the chassis on the their R thirty fours. Um, beyond that, I think there's window masks in it. I think that may be the first time for that. I'd have to go look at my Z-Tune to see if my Z-Tune has window masks. Uh, and, uh, like I said, you get, like I said, two other sets of wheels. You get the five spokes that are, uh, on the kit itself, and then there's, uh, a couple of different other GTR, uh, style, uh, wheels, or a set of Nismo wheels and a set of the regular, just, uh, R34 wheels. The other kit that has come out this week, uh, in the model car series is the, 2009 Nissan GTR V Spec. This is a very cool purple car. Uh, it's not, doesn't look very purple on the box art, but it's. Uh, I think it's. Uh, they're turned. The, the color is actually violet, but it's. It is a very very dark uh, reddish blue rather than being black, like it appears in the box art. I guess box art doesn't necessarily look black black. I thought it was bl just a black car uh, when I bought it. I have this kit from an earlier uh, release. And then uh, did some research on the car and found out that it is actually this special one-off color that uh, the V-Specs are. Uh, this kit is, uh, actually, I believe it has the engine in it. Uh, probably should have checked, but I believe it has the engine in it. Uh, as I sit here and sort of blah, 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 blah to you, I'm going to run in the background here and actually check to see if it has it. Uh, it has window masks, which I believe were in the kit the entire time anyway. Um you get only the sort of one set of wheels that you see on the box art. And uh, let me check the instructions here real quick. This will be the page for the Yes, it does have the engine insert in it. I thought it did. Again, I have an earlier version, and it's been a while since I've looked at the uh, part content in it. But you get, do get the uh, engine insert that uh, comes in all of the R35 uh, GTRs as of late. There are a couple of, we've talked about it a long time ago, a couple of the very early R35 GTRs, the 2007 kits that they did way back when did not have engines because they made a one kit with an engine, one kit without for some reason. But um, be that as it may, that kit, like I said, does have an engine. On the Tune model car side of things, the two releases for this month are the uh, Eurace R34 Skyline, the four-door Skyline. This, of course, is the D1 Grand Prix car, just without all the D1 Grand Prix uh decals. It does still have a racing interior and all that stuff, so you can't really build a, a R34 four-door Skyline out of this. If you've left the ground effects and stuff like that, you're still getting what amounts to a drift car, regardless. Uh, this kit does come with window masks for the first time. Also, I believe this car has the aluminum license plates. 
which are very, very thin little pieces of, of metal uh, that you put the license plates on to give them sort of a, a realistic uh, look rather than being mounted to a big chunky piece of plastic. And the other release is the Sea West Lancer Evo 10. Kind of interesting uh, about this kit. This is the racing version. There were two Sea West kits done for the Evo 10. One's the racing version, one's the street version. Uh, they are effectively both street cars. This is not a race car. There's no roll cage, no racing interior. It's just what they called this car with this set of wheels. Looking at the parts content, in addition to getting, again, the aluminum license plate thing, uh, you also get the hood and the uh, ground effects and the spoiler for the race, for the street version. You don't get the street version's wheels, which were a different set of wheels. You also don't get regular uh, Evo 10 wheels. You, you get the wheels that you see on the box art there. I also believe the Evo 10's regular hood is included in this kit uh, as well for whatever reason. So you get, uh, like I said, a few, you know, bonus extra parts there. You know, what if, if it's enough to get you to buy one. I, I've, I like the car itself. Uh, when I bought the, the Evo 10s, this was the one I really gravitated to because I really like the wheels. And I really just like the look of a car in general. Uh, so it's something to consider. Uh, also from Aoshima this week, a couple of uh, reissues of their pre-painted kits. And these are going to be the R34s. And they are in the uh, white pearl metallic and the Bayside blue. So if you uh, wanted to build an R34, and this is if you look here, these uh, these wheels are another set of the wheels that are in the Z-Tune kit. Um, that's an option. Of course, which we talked about before uh, with their pre-paint kits, everything is still on the runners, so uh, bumpers and things like that, because the bumpers are separate on the. Uh, Aoshima R34s because of all the tuner versions they did, so it was just obviously much easier to swap in new uh, front and rear fascias rather than you know molding those parts on. So you know you will have to uh, deal with that probably a little or a little easier on the white pearl car because you know you might be able to get away with just sort of color matching the white without really worrying about the pearl too much with that base side blue. You know you cut it off the runner, the runner's gonna be white underneath. So something always to consider with the with the pre paints. Uh, that'll take us over to uh, Fujimi, who had uh, one more kit release from March uh, come in this week. And that is this racing version of the Toyota S800. Uh, this is the uh, Tokogira Okaya uh, race version, uh, a fairly famous historical race uh, per race driver and car in Japan. Uh, this would be a like a 1960s, obviously, race car. Um, other than like the decals that, it, that come with this, this is the same S800 kit as you would get just buying the regular one. Um, may not even be aware that there is a regular S800 kit. This uh, the kit is is quasi full detail. It's not a, quite a full engine and full transaxle and stuff like that, but there is an engine and there is a drivetrain. Uh, you know, they basically uh, put in what they needed to put in to make it look right. It's not complete, complete. Uh, but, you know, if you're interested in historic Japanese race cars, that's out this week. Uh, this kit from Hasegawa, the uh, GB121 version of the Nissan Sunny, uh, has been reissued. This is just sort of a stock reissue in the sense of, of just, you know, putting more stock into the system. There's nothing new or different about this than there was when it was released, uh, you know, a year and a half ago. Um, basically, they've needed to put out another version of the Sunny kit, mainly because uh, so many people are building either through the C1 Trans kit or through just making their own. Uh, a lot of people are making those Hakasuka trucks that are the first-gen Skyline front end grafted onto a Sunny pickup truck. Um, and they basically ran out, so they had to bake some more. And then the last kit that was released this week, and probably the most interesting from terms of uh, just um, my personal preferences, and that is the uh, Tamiya uh, Mitsubishi Montero with sport options. Uh, this is sort of the same uh, general gist of uh, product that you got with the Toyota Land Crusher. <laughs> Land Crusher. <laughs> See, I hang around too many people who call it that. The Land Cruiser with <laughs> sport options. You know, we call it a Land Crusher because it's a great big truck. Um, this is a full detail kit. This is uh, a complete 
you know, reissue of the original kit. So it does have left-hand drive. It does have left-hand drive wipers. Actually, the Mitsubishi Montero is the export version of this uh, truck in the first place. So really, the parts that it has in it are the right-hand drive components to make the Pajero version. Uh, but this is a very, very cool kit just because it has been out for a really long time. And, uh, you know, based on the day it is, it is doing a river dance all over the kit value uh, market. This is one of those things that you saw on eBay that would, you know, normally be a north of $75 if you could find one. That's always one of those weird things anyway, because, you know, when you find things on eBay, they have high prices. Chances are they're because they can't sell them at that price. But um, usually, even in the uh, Japanese secondary resale market, there are like $45, $50 kits as far as, you know, trans, you know, translating translating into our uh, our dollar from the yen so having this back at like 2450 fantastic one of those kits that uh, you know sort of falls into my uh, collection of things from Tamiya that I have that I don't have one of these I have land cruiser I have a land crusher sports option I have one of the civilian quote unquote you know the regular just without the, all the jacked up uh, tires and everything. I have a regular Mitsubishi Montero, uh, but I've always wanted one of these, and I was not willing to pay $75 for one. That was just ridiculous. So very, very happy to see that come back. And that, guys, uh, pretty much does it for this week. Um, there are a few more uh, Fujimi kits to expect this uh, in the next couple weeks. Uh, the B-Max Corolla will be out shortly. It has uh, been released in... Hong Kong, Macau, various parts of China. So it's just, we're right now we're just waiting on the shipping to Japan if you're getting it that way. If you want one bad enough, you can get it through Hobby Easy. Uh, actually, the price isn't any different there. It's not like, oh, you got a Hobby Easy, you're going to pay more for the... You no, know, it's, it's just... Uh, if you want one now, that's the way to go get one. Um, but for, you know, getting it out of regular Japanese vendors... You know, BMAX has to ship it to Japan, and then it has to go through, you know, Aoshima's distribution chain. So it'll probably be out this week, but if it's not, it'll be out next week. But it's 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 done, it's out, it's it's available. Uh, we're just, like I said, waiting on shipping on that. Um, still waiting on the uh, Suburban from uh, Ravel. Which, uh, if anything is, you know, time to tell, it should be out Wednesday if it's coming out. I've heard somebody say it wasn't going to come out until May now, but as far as I know, it's still on the release list for this week or for this month. Well, I'm just saying this week a lot. <laughs> this week, I'm doing a, now doing a new show on what is that, ABC? Is AB, this week with ABC. Uh, and then the only thing else we should be expecting out of Aoshima are the uh, release of the 14 inch wheel sets. Uh, those still have not come out yet and are slated to come out uh, in March as far as the release schedule from Aoshima. And then we'll be, uh, you know, pretty much looking ahead as we should be getting uh, the release stuff for May from Aoshima, at least, if not May and June. And uh, I guess one last thing before I forget, because it just rattled around to the front of my brain, is uh, we've talked about last week the... Uh, Dubai decals that they're doing for the non-existent street version of the McLaren 12C, unless you want to either get the diecast or pay for the Hobby Design full kit, uh, and the Audi R8, they're doing a what they're calling a patrol lamp. They're doing a light bar for the Aventador. So this is going to come in one of two different packaging. One is just the light bar, and it's like $11. It's going to be a white metal base with feet, so it's not just free floating on the roof like a lot of the uh, American versions of light bars. Uh, I don't know why? Why did? Why did? Why did Ravel and, and and AMT was good for this too back in the day when they made some police cars? Why did they make their light bars without feet? I mean, uh, you you had no choice but to sort of glue the siren part to the roof and or fab up feet of your. I just I never understood that. But anyway, the Studio Twenty Seven ain't gonna do you like that. They're gonna give you a base with feet. Uh, and then it's like a clear piece of resin that goes on for the lights. There's also a version that's going to be about another $15 more that will include, if you don't have the decals already, uh, that will include the light bar itself and the decals to do the car. So that option exists if you're sort of getting into this on, like I said, the back side of it. And you're like, hey, you know what? I'd like to do an Aventador, but I didn't get the decals and they're sold out everywhere. Well, if you get the right, if you go and look for like the Aventador 
detail up a lamp set or something like that. It's got some weird English translation name to it. Felix like said that version has the the uh, light bar and the decals. You'll still need a Fujimi Aventador, but you'll have the rest of it all at one time. So, anyway, guys, uh, I hope you enjoy your weekend. Hope you're sober enough by Monday to realize that it's Monday and you all need to go back to work. And we'll see you guys.